This is a story of Mary Ellen Wilson, who was born in 1864 and was a heavily abused child. To be exact, this is a story of her court case and how it was the beginning of the child protection movement worldwide. But you know that I'm going to tie it into veganism somehow. In 1874, missionary Etta Wheeler took an interest in her 10-year-old neighbor and her condition. That neighbor was Mary Ellen. Miss Wheeler tried to use the existing laws to remove Mary Mary Ellen from the custody of her abusive carers, but the New York City authorities were reluctant to intervene. Miss Wheeler's niece convinced her to contact Henry Berg, founder of the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, by stating, you are so troubled over that abused child, why not go to Mr. Berg? She's a little animal, surely. Oh my god, no she didn't compare a human to an animal, how dare she? That is outrageous. Everybody knows that no matter the circumstances, the comparison of humans to animals is absolutely not something you should do. Anyway, some accounts state that the comparison was made in court as well, and that the laws against animal cruelty at the time were used in court to remove Mary Ellen from the abusive house, but I think that that's revisionist. It's probably the fact that Henry Burke had a bit of compassion for animals, and that meant that he also had some compassion for small defenseless humans, as if there was some kind of link there. As if, as if compassion to one small defenseless creature probably means that you also have compassion to another small defenseless creature. Maybe? What do you think, ladies, gentlemen, and NBs? On April 10th, 1874, Mary Allen went to court. Henry Berg contacted some reporters, so we have detailed newspaper accounts that described Mary Ellen's appalling physical condition. When she was taken before Judge Lawrence, she was dressed in ragged clothing, was bruised all over her body and had a gash over her left eye and on her cheek where Mary Connolly, Mary Ellen's adopting mother, had struck her with a pair of scissors. That day Mary Ellen testified the following. My father and mother are both dead. I don't know how old I am. I have no recollection of the time when I did not live with the Connollys. Mama has been in the habit of whipping and beating me almost every day. She used to whip me with a twisted whip, a raw hide. The whip always left a black and blue mark on my body. I have now the black and blue marks on my head, which were made by my mama, and also a cut on the left side of my forehead, which was made by a pair of scissors. She struck me with the scissors and cut me. I have no recollection of ever having been kissed by anyone, have never been kissed by mama. I have never been taken to my mama's lap and caressed or petted. I never dared to speak to anybody because if I did, I would get whipped. I do not know for what I was whipped. Mama never said anything to me when she whipped me. I do not want to go back to live with mama because she beats me so. I have no recollection ever being on the street in my life. This is heartbreaking and so lucky this victim of abuse that she can talk and finally got the opportunity to do so. In response to this testimony, Judge Lawrence removed the child from the custody of Mary Connolly, who was found guilty of felonious assault and was sentenced to one year of hard labor in the penitentiary. There are so many tangents I want to go on from this story. First of all, if compassion can move us from animals to children, I don't don't understand why it can't move us the other direction as well. We should look at our process in the domain of child protection and implement that on animals in our care as well, care being the operative word that needs to be defined better. Furthermore, the compassion should be emphasized and gone through based on traits of each species. That's the only way to derive actual best interest, which is what morality is. As far as as I can be trusted with such a claim. Laws should be made with the animal's best interest in mind, or it's useless in protecting said animal. I'm looking at you, Animal Welfare Act. 
Which brings us to ASPCA. You thought I forgot about your welfare status, but no, I did not. ASPCA, self-proclaimed animal lives savers since 1866, but only certain animals. Because here is what they have to say about farmed animals. Pioneers of Protection. In 1998, we successfully petitioned the US Food and Drug Administration to declare meat from downed animals adulterated, and in 2003, we supported the development of Humane Farm Animal Care, the first organization to establish standards accepted by the US Department of Agriculture and the International Organization for Standardization for Humane Treatment of Farm Animals from Birth to slaughter animal lifesavers right as for our boy henry berg he started his journey by defending a horse from being beaten by a carriage driver which i of course applaud google laughed at me when i asked if henry berg was a vegetarian which of course he wasn't he just couldn't see animal suffering Consuming animal suffering was just fine. In all seriousness, I applaud him for being a true champion for animal welfare, which was innovative for that time. I just wish that the modern SPCA moved on and updated their mission to actually save the lives of all animals, like we need them to be as an organization with highly developed litigious abilities. Fight for animal rights, SPCA, not just welfare. The tiniest credit where credit is due. SPCA does have a plant-based diet guide on their site, buried pretty deeply. And by plant-based, they mean reducitarian, of course. I'm done with the story for now, but before I go, I want to mention my notification email list. YouTube notifications are not optimal, especially when it comes to short videos. I create my short videos with the wider audience in mind, and the success of short videos kinda depends on whether or not they get traction in the first few hours, so if you are interested in getting notified via email and help me out in the process, please consider joining my list. The link is in the description. Also, please like, subscribe and share this video somewhere online if that's something that you are inspired to do. See you next time!